Hello friends, let's discuss one more trick today. This is based on my code review. So whenever the MuleSoft developer, they start implementation and let's say they have a requirement to access the API, which is secured via OAuth 2.0 token enforcement policy. So what they do generally, before calling that API, they try to generate the token. And let's say that token expiry time is one hour, what they will do, they will try to keep it in object store. Okay. And whenever that token expires, they will regenerate it and then refresh their object store. So that's how they will use it. Instead of doing this, instead of doing all these activities, we can actually use the STDB requester component capability, inbuilt capability, and we can do all these things in the single component. That's the trick. Okay. So this is basically handling OAuth dance efficiently. So let's look at that. What all requirement we need? So we need a we need a API which is secured via uh, the OAuth policy. So this is my API which I have applied the policy, and we need OAuth provider. So for my use case, I have created our own Mule OAuth provider. So we can create, we can deploy, and we can expose some endpoints of our mule auth provider so i have deployed one over here okay how to implement how to deploy there are multiple videos available i'll recommend to go through it this is out of scope for us for this session okay so let's say OAuth provider is there and we have secured our api by using that OAuth provider okay so i have applied this policy and this is the this is the url which i'm using it from that particular OAuth provider okay which is going to validate the token okay so let's go ahead and let's look at how we can uh, see these things. Okay. So intentionally what I have done, I have implemented this OAuth provider and uh, simply I'll show you. Okay. I'm not going to explain things more here, but let's go here. And in the OAuth provider intentionally for token, I keep my token expiry time is one minute to show that I can show you a proper uh, uh, demo. Okay. So let's go ahead. So that means you can consider that uh, for any client, the token will be valid for one minute only. Okay. This is intentional uh, by default, whatever, you know, expiry you want to keep it, you can keep it. But generally we go for 60 minutes, right? So one hour. Okay. So let's go ahead quickly and see. So I have get order API. So to access this API, I need this token. So to get the token, we need to create the client first. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the client. So I'm going to create the client. So these are my client ID, client secret. Let's go ahead and create this first. Already registered, so okay. So because it's already there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, generate the token. So let's go ahead and generate the token. Okay, so this is a token. Let's copy this. And let's go to the get order API. Okay, we are able to get the data. Now, if we wait for one minute, it, this a token will get expired, but I, I don't want to wait here. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll come back here later. So let's go ahead to our any point platform. Okay, so let's look at our use case okay so with which i was talking about like so normal mules of developer will do this he will try to get the token he will have retry token and then it will check whether token is there in the object store or not if it is not there he will try to create and refresh it okay if it is there it will use it okay so this is the Now let me show you the trick. Okay, so I said like we can use a simple one component. Okay, now when you drag and drop HTTP requester, okay, and we go to the configuration of our HTTP requester. Let's go ahead here. There is an option here, okay, to configure authentication. Okay, so there is a configure to, you know, you can configure authentication here. And now when you see here, 
I am getting more option. But generally, when you drag and drop your uh, uh, requester, you won't get all these options. So let me tell you what you need to do. Okay. So for example, if I go to any HTTP requester component, okay, and if I try to show you, so let's say this is the HTTP requester component. I'm I'm opening other project. Okay, and if you go to the configuration of Here we have authentication none, right? You see, you don't find the options which I have shown in my HTTP request component for our use case. So yes, so what I have done to get those options, okay, to get those options, let me close this project. We don't need it. I have added a module called OAuth. The moment you add OAuth module to your application, automatically your HTTP requester component will show you those options. This is the trick. And then you can configure your, your OAuth dance here, okay? How to get the token. I'll show you that one by one. The moment I add that module, OAuth module to my application, I'm getting option called client, client, client credentials grant type, and other basic authentication, authorization code grant type. So I'm getting more options. Now I can select this option client credentials and then I can pass my client ID, client secret and I can create a object store to keep this token whenever it's getting generated and I'm giving token URL that URL which we, is going to generate and I'm going to uh, you know uh, set the response access token, refer, uh, response refresh token, expiry from this particular output. So when you generate the output right uh, token, you'll be getting three parameters, right? Access token, token type, and expiry. So right now I'm not generating any refresh token. That's the reason I'm not getting it, but this is important access token. This will get stored in this particular object store. And that's it. Okay. So that is the configuration we need. We need OAuth module to be added to our project to get more option. And then you can pass client ID, client secret. And then you can pass the uh, token generation URL and you can set these values in our in our object store. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead. Let's check that whether that token is expired. So if you go to the orders and send, yeah, see that token is expired, right? So that means you need to continuously generate that token either via your code or you need to do a manual, right? So this is what we don't want. Now let's go ahead. So we have seen the configuration single get orders flow to, and it's already running. Let me go ahead. Yes, it's running. Let's go to the, yeah. So let me show you quickly what endpoint I'm using here. Get orders zero to, okay. Let's go to the, yeah. So I'm trying to run this get order. You see that? Same endpoint, I'm trying to hit it here. I don't need to create token again and again. I don't need to write any extra logic for it. Even after one minute, if you come back here and try to run it, it will automatically refresh the token in that object store. So let me quickly show you again setting if you have any doubts. So this is the URL where we need auth token and see, one more interesting thing is for this URL, I'm not passing any header. That is also automatically taken care. The authorization will be passed on from this setting automatically. So that authorization header will be out. Otherwise, what I need to do when we are calling this endpoint, right? We are passing this authorization. See here, bearer token. But the, we don't need to pass anything here. That's the beauty. Let me just show you. When I configure this, See, gate operation, only URL I have passed, nothing else. Have a look at it. So that authorization from where it is coming from, that is coming from this configuration, which we have configured here. You can go to this client credentials, client ID, client secret. Automatically, the token will be stored here and it will be passed on as an authorization header to your downstream API automatically. That's the trick, okay? And that's the trick I wanted to explain. 
hope you hope you like it share with your friends if you are not subscribed it please go ahead and subscribe the channel thank you